Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Gepra C Pika 220mm 5 inch racing quadcopter. Recently Gepra C released excellent buy and fly and plug and play quadcopters such as the Mark II which is one of my favorite 5 inch freestyle quadcopters and today in this video I'm going to see if they managed to release another winner. The Gepra C Pika is available in two versions. You can get a plug and play version which doesn't come with any receiver or you can get the Bind and Fly version, which is the one of God, which comes with an FR Sky XM Plus receiver. Inside the package, along with the quadcopter, you're getting plenty of accessories that will help you to get you started. First of all, you can find 5 sets of Gepro C 5040 propellers, Velcro straps for the battery, and also for mounting an action camera on top of the quadcopter, the user manuals, and some stickers, an RCP Gepro C Pagoda 2 antenna with an RPSMA antenna connector. Two plastic protectors for the radio receiver antennas, rubber covers, and also three hex key drivers. A battery button plate with an anti-skid sticker and also some landing pads. Extra connectors for an FEV camera and for the radio receiver. And always the control board for the Runcom Micro Swift FEV camera. And finally, bottom and top pads for the battery, since you're given the option either to mount the battery on top of the quadcopter or underneath it. Just like the Mark II, on the center of the Pika we can find the Gepper C Span F4 tower. The bottom board is a 4-in-1 40 ampere BLL ESC and the center board is an F4 flight controller. It comes pre-flashed with Betaflight 3.5.3 and it features an integrated VTX that supports smart audio on IRC drum protocol and it has a selectable output strength of 25, 200 and 600 mW. When I reviewed the Gepro C Elegant quadcopter, which is using the same tower, I also measured its output strength and I'm going to put a link over here to this video, so if you'd like, you can check it out. Since this is the Binary Fly version, on the top of the stack we can find an FR Sky XM Plus receiver, and in addition we can also find a buzzer which is connected to the flight controller on the front, and also a 35 volt 220 microfarad capacitor which is connected on the back. The connector for the antenna is secured using this TPU 3D printed part, however I'm not sure if it's only my problem or it's a standard issue. The connector is a little bit too short, so what you're going to need to do is just to remove these parts over here and only after removing them you'll be able to connect the antenna, otherwise it's just going to be too short. The battery leads are high quality 14 AWG wires and they are pretty long, which will enable you to mount the battery either on top or on the bottom and I highly recommend to secure them to the arm or to the side of the quadcopter using a zip tie in order to protect the battery pads from getting ripped off in case of a crash. As for motors, the Pika is using the Gepro C SpeedX GR2306 2450KB motors which can handle up to 5S lipo batteries just like the all-in-one stack and finally on the front we can find the Runcom Micro Swift Micro FEV camera. As for the frame itself, the Pika is using replaceable arms their thickness is 5mm and they look pretty strong, so they're not going to break easily. The thickness of the side plates that are holding the camera is 1.8mm and the thickness of the bottom plate and also the top plate is about 2.5mm. The wheelbase is 220mm. The distance between the back motors to the front ones is about 16cm and the distance between the left motors and the right ones is about 15.5cm. After adding the propellers, the FEV antenna and the protectors for the radio receiver antennas, the total weight is 327.7 grams, so this is a pretty light quadcopter. It's still a little bit heavier than the AGRC Mephisto, which I recently reviewed, which weighs 314.7 grams, but of course it is lighter than the Gepper C Mark II, which is a freestyle quadcopter and weighs 370.8 grams. The next thing I'm going to do is to go over beta flight configuration and then I'm going to head outdoors and test the Pico using 4 and 5S type of batteries. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video and I will see you in the end of it in order to give you my conclusion.
So overall I can tell you that Gepper C got himself another winner and the Pika is a well-tuned, well-built, fun-to-fly racing quadcopter. It performed great both on 4 and 5S type of batteries, but I think that the default tuning is more suitable for 4S type of batteries and if you're going to fly it with 5S you will need to do some PID tuning and you will need to define a different profile for 5S if you want to better enjoy it. In terms of flight time, I could get around 4.5 minutes using a 4S 1500mAh LiPo battery and when the run cam tree was mounted on top of the Pika, I could get about 3.5 minutes. Another nice advantage of the Pika is that it has some extra room on the center, so what I'm going to do on one of my next videos is to add the run cam split to S, which I've recently reviewed, but I still they didn't test it on the quadcopter, so I think the Pika is going to be a good platform to edit and soon I'm going to post some flight footage. The only disadvantage I can think of is that the FR Sky XM Plus receiver the Bind and Fly version comes with does not support RSSI, so you have two options if you want to get the RSSI on the OSD. First of all, you can flash the FR Sky XM Plus receiver to its latest version, and then you're going to get the RSSI on one of its auxiliary channels. And the second option is just to get the plug and play version and add your own receiver that supports RSSI, such as the FR Sky RXSR. Now if you're debating whether to get the Pika 220 or the Mark II, first of all I can tell you that these quadcopters are a little bit different, but overall I didn't fly the Pika long enough in order to tell you which one is better. I can tell you that both are pretty good options. The Pika costs $10 less than the Mark II, and one of the nice things about the Mark II is that it comes with an extra arm, which the Pika doesn't come with. And in addition, you're also getting these 3D printed TPU parts, which are going to help you to protect the motors. And also you're getting this nice 3D printed part that will help you to mount an action camera on top of the Mark II, which does not come with the Pika. However, if you want to add an action camera, as I mentioned before, a good option on the Pika would be to add the Runcom Split 2S, since it's a pretty light quadcopter, so I don't think it's going to damage its performance. So stay tuned for the flight footage in order to see how it's going to perform. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about the Pika 220, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.